have talked about. Uh, and it is found in uh, uh, Second Corinthians chapter number 12. The scripture on the screen says, But he said unto me, He there is the Lord. Uh, the me there is the Apostle Paul. So the Apostle Paul is saying, But he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Do we want the power of Christ to rest upon us? Praise God. That's a good, good prayer to have in our uh, prayer needs. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Blessed is the person who has that power resting upon them. Praise God. So that is the words of the Apostle Paul coming from uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. Most of you may be familiar with chapter number 12, where the Apostle talks about an experience that he had and how he handled it. And by going through this experience, may God give us the grace to handle tough times in our own life. Praise God. So I hope uh, you have a chance to look at that scripture and thank God for that Bible verse. Amen. And I do thank God. I say thank you, Lord, because your power is made perfect in weakness. Nobody wants to be weak. We all want to be strong people. Nobody wants to be known as a weakling. But in Christian life, weakness is a strength. When we say weakness, it is not the weakness we think of. It is humility. It is, it is being humble before God. It is, it is depending upon God. It is saying to him, I cannot do without you. I need your grace. I need your favor. As Jesus said, unless you abide in the vine, you cannot do that's, that's the kind of weakness. I cannot do much without the help of God. That's the weakness. Especially in, the, in Christian service, in Christian life, we so much need the blessings of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10, let us read it. And uh, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, concerning this thing meaning concerning this thorn in the flesh, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, I am, then I am strong. Hallelujah. This is, this is quite contrary to the, the thinking of the world. Nobody in the world wants to say that I, I glory and I take pleasure in infirmities. Who in their right mind would say, <laughs> I glory in my infirmities? Who would say, I glory in my reproaches. When my neighbor, when my friend reproach me, I, I'm really glad about it. How many of us can truly say that? Or when we are in need, when we are in need, we all 
would like for all of our needs to be supplied um, before that need arises. That's, that's the way we want things to be done. But the Apostle Paul is saying that needs in my life, that's okay. I am glad because the needs in my life makes me want to pray more. The needs in my life makes me want to depend upon God. The, the needs in my life well, makes me to recognize that I am, I am weak and He is strong. Praise God. So he says, I will take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions. And who would want to have persecution? We are so easily offended when somebody even says some small things about us. Like he didn't shave this morning. Oh, did he say that me? about me? We don't, we don't like to be persecuted. But Paul says, that's okay. As a believer, as a servant of God, I take pleasure. In other words, I welcome persecutions. Only a child of God can say these things, right? Right? Who, ha who is so loud to the Lord. Only they can say that. If we are a nominal Christian, we, it's hard for us to say that. Even if we are a, a little, little mature, uh, we will be very careful before, before we utter these words. Because they are really tough things we are talking about. And uh, he says, in needs and persecutions and distresses. All for Jesus' sake. For Christ's sake. Because when I am weak, then I am, I am strong. That's the key. Paul learned that when he is really weak, that is when the power of Christ comes through his life. Praise God. That's why he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whatever I do, it is not me doing it. It is Christ working through me. Praise God. I often ask the Lord, uh, speak through me and work through me. Let me be your feet in this world. Let me be your hands in this world. Let me be the speaker on your behalf in this world, O oh Lord. And that's why we are placed here on this earth as ambassadors to Jesus Christ. Our, our job is to please him foremost, foremost. So I want to talk to you about the thorns of life. About the thorns of life. In this sermon, we will study Paul's prayer for the removal of his thorn in the flesh and how God answered his prayer. When we pray, God often surprises us with an answer far better than what we were hoping for. Paul rejoiced in the way God answered his prayer, though the thorn of the flesh was not removed. <laughs> Praise God. The thorn of the flesh was not removed, but Paul found reasons to rejoice in the answer he received from God. Hallelujah. My friends, how many of us can really thank and rejoice in the Lord if he did not answer your prayer exactly according uh, as you wanted it. How many of you can truly say, thank you, Lord. I don't mind that you did not answer my prayer the way I wanted it to be answered. But you see, most of us, when we pray, we have an answer already that we suggest to God. God, answer this prayer in this manner. When we do that, we are saying, you know, though we may not realize it, God, perhaps you don't know what my real needs are. I know it, and therefore I am suggesting to you, this is the way you need to answer my prayer. As I've told you many times here, I, I was so uh, uh, interested by the prayer request of uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, when, 
when they were in Cana of Galilee, they ran out of wine. Remember that? And all Mary said was, they have no wine. That's all. They have no wine. And, and, and Mary knew to leave the rest into his hands. Whatever he chose to do, that was fine with her. Is that the way we approach prayer? I have made that mistake of suggesting to God, God, this is the way. This is the right way to do it when you answer that prayer. And many times we do that because of the people we are praying for. Are you with me? Hmm? Because they wanted to hear that, that kind of prayer. Pastor, I, uh, my visa is ending. Please pray for me. So what is a pastor supposed to do? God, give him the visa. Right? Pastor, my job is ending. God, bless him. How you favor upon him. Let him have that new job right away. When I do that, I think I am stepping into the territory of what God wants to do in that life. So if I ever don't ask God to bless you with a new job or an extension of a visa, please realize I am asking God to do his perfect will in your life. I don't know. I'll be brave enough to do that. But that's the way prayer ought to be. And I think we learn a wonderful lesson listening to what Paul is saying in these passages. You know, there was a thorn in his flesh. A thorn is something that really troubles us. It is a painful experience, an annoying thing. We would rather take it away right away. Have you been, been struck with a, with, a, with a thorn when you are around a rose bush or any other thorny plant? You know, you want to take away, take it away. If it gets into you, you want to remove it. That's, that's our nature. A splinter in your finger. It has gone so deep into it, you don't know how to pull it out. But it bugs you. It bothers you until you remove it. That's our tendency. That's our nature. This great man, Samuel Rutherford, said, Why should I tremble at the plow of my Lord that makes deep furrows in my soul he is no idle husbandman. He purposes a crop. Hallelujah! That's the approach we ought to have in God's presence when we come to pray. Amen. Can I read it one more time? Why should I tremble at the, at the plow of my Lord that makes deep furrows in my soul? He is no idle husbandman. He purposes a crop in your life and in my life. And that's why sometimes we have these experiences of thorns in our life. It is not God punishing us. It is God making us ready for a higher purpose in life. To do something wonderful that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. It's, it's a preparation thing. Praise God. Many of you have thorns in your life. Something that is very discomforting. Something that is very painful. Something you have been dealing with for many, many years. You have been praying about it. In fact, you ask the Lord to remove it. And it is still there. It is still there. A thorn is something that causes pain. We don't like it, and we, don't, and we want to be free of thorns. The Bible says Paul was given a thorn. Did you notice that? <laughs> Paul was, if you have your Bible, that's why it is important to have the Bible with you. You know, we cannot put anything, everything on the screen. You, have, you got to have your Bible. The other day, 
the other day, somebody sent me a, a clip of a video where a, a big preacher, I think, you know, when you get a video of somebody, somebody uh, from, from somewhere, you know, he must be a big preacher. So a big preacher, and, and I opened it and listening to it, and, um, you know, he was saying, remember one day I stood here at Friday night, and I asked the church, what is this? Remember that? Anybody remember? <laughs> we have such a short memory. I asked the church, what is this? And everybody said, that's a phone. Everybody. And then I asked the church, what is this? And everybody said, this is a phone. Right? <laughs> what is this? This is, a, this is a Bible. Now, Bible comes in many, many shapes. You have big Bible, small Bible. This commentary, that commentary, many, many. But this is a, this is a Bible. So that's, I said that several months ago. And I encourage people to bring the Bible with them when they come to the church. Because when they bring the phone, they are not bringing the Bible. The Bible may be in the phone, but there are so many other stuff in it. But we need to be focused. We need to be focused and we need the Bible. So, so I opened this thing up. And you know, this big preacher was saying, I got to tell you something today. And he did exactly what I did here. And I was surprised. So it is not simply me thinking about it. There are other people thinking about the same thing. That people have replaced their Bible with their, with their, say, it's okay. For with their phone. What a blessing it is to see people walking into the church carrying their Bible. There are many places in the world that they would die to get a Bible. But yet, well, that's another theme. So the Bible speaks here, Paul was given a thorn. In verse number 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, there was given to me. God gave me a thorn. So the thorn in your life, where did that come from? If you are a believer, if you are a child of God, trusting in God's power and grace, the thorn in your life is a gift from God for your own benefit. And we don't see it that way. We don't see it that way. God, I just don't want this thorn in my life. I was, I'm always uh, blessed by reading the account in chapter number 16 where Paul and Silas, when they were thrown into the prison, they did not pray for deliverance from that prison. Did you notice that? I did not pray for it. But me, that would be my first prayer. Lord, get me out of here. Because they knew to trust in the providence and in the grace of God. They knew that they were in the plan and the will of God. And whatever happened to them, their heavenly father is completely aware of it. And that's the kind of life we need to live. Trusting in the grace of God in his providence, no matter what comes to our life. Brother Gerald, we have a cell group going on in St. Paul, and God is blessing that cell group in such a way. It is, it is it's so wonderful. And, and, and a few weeks ago, he told me, Pastor, I may be moving out. I may be going to some other city because of the job requirement. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was some sort of, some, what of, some sort of a shock for me. You know, it's a, why? Because things are going so, so great in that cell group, and now you take the, 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 the person and the family that, that is the, 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 the catalyst there, you take them out, and what happens? 
But you know, I told him, if that is God's will, that's what we want to see. We are sorry. We, are, we, we don't want to see it, but, but that doesn't matter. We want to see God's plan fulfilled in your life. Whatever it is, it may be a loss for us, but God, if God has plans for him, it's okay. My dear brothers, that's the way that we need to look at life. I belong to God. And whatever happens in my life, he is in charge of it. Thank you, Jesus. That's why people like David could say without any fear, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I don't think he said that because all his needs were met. I think it was a statement of faith in God. Because if you read the book of Psalms, you can see uh, the trials of David. Can you not? You can see the trials of David. He talks about how they have set a snare before him. He talked about how his enemies are laughing and scoffing at him. But when he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, it is a complete trust in God and a statement of his faith in his loving father. That's what it is. So that's the way we want to live our life. Paul saw clearly that humiliation, that thorn came through the abundance of revelations unless he should be puffed up by beyond measure. And there was a reason that God gave him this thorn. It was given by God. The thorn in my life, the thorn in your life, think about it, it is a it is given. It's a given by God for your own benefit. Here the issue is that because of the abundance of revelation, Paul had a good chance to fall into pride. Look at me. I got this great revelation that none of you had. It's the human nature to fall into pride. And that's a real danger in our life, the real possibility of pride in life. And we, we, all of us face that possibility. Perhaps of our looks, I look better than most people. Or perhaps on our ability, I can do more things than most people. Or of our wealth, I, I, I have more income than other people. Or, or our position, whatever it might be, there is a real possibility that we can fall into pride. And the Apostle Paul is saying... Now, God gave me a thorn in the flesh to keep me from falling into pride. So God has a higher purpose in mind. So God's purpose was not to hurt, to humiliate, to cause him pain, but God's purpose was to keep him humble so that he can be a mighty servant for his glory. That was God's plan. How many people's life is ruined because of pride? Because they think they are greater or better than somebody else. That's pride. May God give us that grace to stay humble. A loving, gracious Father permits thorns as a way of sanctifying us, keeping us humble and dependent on him. He uses a real strong Greek word, Paul does, parakleo, and, and it means that he intensely and, and uh, earnestly begged God, begged God to take this thorn away from him. It was no ordinary prayer. It was no cold, indifferent prayer. It was real real prayer, and he really pleaded with God. And look at the, as we look at the prayer, Paul's response to this thorn, he prayed. And that's what we ought to do. In every trial, in every situation, we need to pray to God. We need to pray. And how did he pray? He prayed to the Lord Jesus. He prayed to the Lord Jesus. The other day, somebody was testifying somewhere, and they said, well, I had, uh, you know, so many gods that I could pray for. 
And they asked the Christian friend, you have only one God, right? The one God is the mighty God. The one God is the living God. The one God is a prayer hearing and answer God. So he prayed to the Lord Jesus. Can you pray to the Lord Jesus? Do you belong to him? So he pleaded with the Lord Jesus three different times. I begged the Lord to take it away. This was not a call or indifferent prayer. He continued to knock on the door until the door was opened. He continued like Jacob did until he prevailed in the wrestling. So he prayed specifically. The Bible says he prayed to the Lord that this thing, this thing might be removed. This, this thorn, Lord, this thorn that is hurting me, this thorn that is causing me pain and humiliation, this thorn that is hindering me in my journey, in my ministry, Lord, this, this thorn, I want you, Lord, to be removed. What was God's answer to Paul's prayer? He didn't say, okay, Paul, I will, I will remove that thorn for you. You are a good servant of mine. You go from place to place. You suffer for me. You are persecuted for me. You have been often hungry for me. You've been in prison for me. I will, I will just give you what you asked. But God did not answer that prayer like that. He said, I'm going to give you something better. Hallelujah. Something better. And some of us may be thinking or, you know, what, why, how come grace would be better than just taking the, the thorn out? Well, God is saying, I will give you something better. And uh, the answer was not he, what he was looking for. God said, all you need is grace. Grace. Because my grace, the continuous presence, and the steadfast love of God. Would you trade anything for it? If you have the promise of God, I will be with you. I will give you grace to, to overcome your pain, your humiliation. I will, my presence is going to be with you. I will give you my grace and we want to be able to say, praise God, that's what I need. If I can bear this, if I can sustain my, myself through this, and if it brings glory to your name, Lord, let the thorn be there. Give me grace. Give me grace. And that's what God did, because God knows what is best for us. In our prayer, we need to realize that. To assume that God had made a mistake is a very wrong assumption. Sometimes our prayers are based on that assumption. God, you might, you know, you, you made a mistake in this case. How come I have this thorn in my life? To assume that is a great mistake in our life. We had to always think that God loves me. And that he will not allow anything to come to me, to harm me, to hurt me. It's always to his glory and more for my benefit. Praise God. God knows of Paul's thorn, but offers grace to deal with it. Praise God. So the purpose of the thorn was... That there was no mistake in sending or allowing the thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan would be made to proclaim the power of Christ. Amen? This messenger of Satan, this thorn in the flesh, God is going to transform that by the supply of grace that that same thing will now proclaim the grace of God mightily than ever before. The messenger of Satan would be, would be used or may be made to proclaim the power of Christ. Christ's glory will be enhanced. You know, once, once Joseph said, you meant it for evil. You meant it for evil, but God has turned that all around 
praise God, you sold me, but God made me the prime minister of Egypt. You meant it for evil. That isn't the purpose of God. Praise be to God. And that's what, how we need to look at our situations in life. As I said earlier, many of us have thorns in life, and we wish they would go away. And I believe God, in his own right time, when we learn our lessons, he will be gracious to remove it. But until then, he will give us grace to sustain us through it. Can you say amen? Praise God. Because God is loving. God is faithful. He's not against us. He is for us. Praise God. Time is uh, flying away from us. So dear friend, I pray this lesson from the Apostle Paul gives a new insight into your own thorns of life and make you understand the purpose of it and cause you to ask for God's amazing grace to sustain you through it. If you are going through a thorn experience in your life right now, pray for God's grace that he, you can sustain through it. May your thorn be used for the glory of God, leading you to say, as Paul did, for when I am weak, then I am strong. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Would you say amen? amen? My grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient for me, regardless of, regardless of what kind of thorn I am having in my life. Remember, brother, sister, you may not have a thorn right now, but wait a little bit. It will come. And when it comes, look to God and understand the purpose of it. If there is sin in your life, forsake it. If there is no sin in your life, God is preparing for uh, something else. Trust in him. Trust in him. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. So I pray today, Lord, by your grace, I will endure my thorn. And whenever it pleases you to pull it out, whatever your time is, it's okay with me. And if I should suffer a lifetime with it, let your will be done. Thank you, Lord. We must remember always the thorns Christ wore for us and with which he was crowned sanctify and make easy all the thorns in the flesh we may ever be afflicted with. Right? The thorns that Jesus wore sanctify us and give us that grace to handle the thorns of our life, whichever way it may afflict. Because he, he was afflicted first. And through his affliction, we find grace. We find, we, we find grace. Would you stand with me, please? As we enter into the communion service right now, I, said, I told you that the crown that Jesus wore gives us encouragement and courage to face the thorns of our life. All the thorns that we are asked to carry or bear has a divine purpose. And let us yield under the mighty hand of God and ask him to use that thorn for his glory and for our spiritual growth. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. Lord, we know that you love us beyond any words that we can use to explain it. You love us so much. And you will not allow any thorn to come into our life unless it is for a specific purpose. 
for our own spiritual benefits and for your own glory. So, Lord, we heal our life. We humble ourselves and say, give us grace. Give us grace. As you, told, as you said to Paul, Lord Jesus, speak to our hearts this morning. I will give you grace. And my grace is sufficient for you. I believe it, Lord. And I say amen to it. And I will be victorious in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come to break the bread and drink from the cup. As you instructed your disciples, whenever you come together, and whenever you break this bread and drink from the cup, you do it remembering me. The bread is the bread. It is the body that was broken for our sins. And the cup symbolizes the blood that was shed for us. So when we receive this bread, when we receive this cup, 